To believe in the teaching of evolution over creation is to deny the very existence of God. The two are completely incompatible and to accept one is to reject the other. One says that everything that is originated from nothing and the other acknowledges that everything that is is specifically des designed by a God that in himself is everything. A God that is outside of time and space as we know it. An omnipotent God that through a longing for relationship and worship made man in his own image and the world that we live in. In Romans 1 verse 20 to 23, the Bible tells us, For since the creation of the world, his invisible attributes are clearly seen, being understood by the things that are made, even his eternal power and Godhead, so that they are without excuse. Because although they knew God, they did not glorify him as God, nor were they thankful, but became futile in their thoughts, and their foolish hearts were darkened. Professing to be wise, they became fools, and changed the glory of the incorruptible God into an image made like corruptible man, and birds, and four-footed animals, and creeping things. And then in Psalms 14 verse 1, the Bible tells us, The fool says in his heart, there is no God. They are corrupt, they have done abominable, abominable works, there is none who does good. So the word of God is crystal clear. To deny God as the creator and profess that creation was a process over millions of years, that nothing miraculously evolved into something, and that something being so amazing and precise that they are seen as fools in God's eyes. Professing to be wise, they became fools. You see, the major issue is not whether or not God exists. The spirit man and every human being knows its creator. To rebelliously deny this fact is because to acknowledge God, we need to acknowledge our sin. And to acknowledge God, we need to acknowledge that we are not God. The atheist declares there is no God and he lies to himself. In John 3 verse 19 through 21 to 21, it says, Jesus speaking, and this is the condemnation, that the light has come into the world and men love darkness rather than the light, because their deeds are evil. For everyone practicing evil hates the light and does not come to the light, lest his deeds should be exposed. But he who does the truth comes to the light, that his deeds may be clearly seen that they have been done in God. So to believe in the scientific impossibility that nothing created something is nothing short of a cop-out and just plain foolishness. To take a chance on an eternity separated from God in hell based on a belief system that cannot explain itself in any logical way is insanity. So they, the evolutionists, spread it over millions of years and say case closed. No, the case is really not open for debate with God. God is the creator of life. Until today, there is no scientific proof of any animal evolving outside of its kind. Creation evolves, or a true definition, adapts according to its habitat within its kind. The same as a bodybuilder puts increasing demands on their body over time. The body responds by increasing muscle density and strength to cope. The bodybuilder will never, will never evolve into a six-foot silverback gorilla, but will adapt to the ever-increasing demand from the habitat he or she places himself in by growing stronger and bigger. Look at the awesomeness of God's creation. The huge elephant down to the tiny little ant and the immense diversity of life in between, all having a specific purpose, working in perfect harmony in an amazing circle of life. The moon, the sun, the earth with four seasons, every day divided by a night and day. The earth being just the right distance from the sun, clearly designed by a mind far, far above what we are capable of perceiving or even remotely understanding. From the absolute multitude of different birds, fish, mammals, plants, trees, herbs and insects, to believe for one minute that all of this stems from a bacteria that one day decided to grow legs and climb out of a cesspool is beyond insanity. To think that a fish got tired of swimming so grew legs and lungs and left the water, then got tired of walking so grew wings. Come on, really? Yet as long as we have knowledge, never once has this happened before us. So we hide behind the millions of years garbage. Okay, I will give you the tadpole turning into a frog. But until the day comes that a frog flies over my head with a set of wings, I think I can safely say that evolution above creation is a farce. I'll say this, that I would love to have been witness, to have been a witness to the supersonic boom that must have taken place when God said, let there be light. And there was light. 
Darkness fled as God himself spoke. What an amazing day that must have been. Even today, darkness flees at the presence of light. Are you living in darkness? Are you surrounded by fear, loneliness and despair? Are you aware of God but don't truly know him? Here's the question. Do you truly want to know him? Can you imagine having a relationship with the creator of heaven and earth as a father has with his child? God has made a way where there was no way. Where mankind cut themselves off from the creator through sin, God made a way back to himself through his son, Jesus Christ. Where sin gave you and I a death sentence, Jesus Christ gives us life. So just as in the beginning, when darkness was over all of the earth and God spoke, today as your life may be surrounded by darkness, Jesus Christ will bring you light. The vast majority of people believe that one day we will die and face God. And he will weigh up our good deeds against our bad deeds. And depending on the result, the outcome for eternity will be either heaven or hell. If our good deeds outweigh our bad deeds, we get heaven. If, however, our bad deeds outweigh our good deeds, we get hell. The truth is, we are all self-righteous in our own eyes. We console ourselves into believing we are good people. But our perception on good is skewed by our own upbringing, education, financial status and life experiences. You see, our perception is our reality, and our reality is our truth. A doctor's perception of good and truth is vastly different to a homeless person's perception of good and truth. Adolf Hitler thought he was doing the world a favor by murdering six million Jews. He genuinely thought he was a good person. <coughs> Excuse me. Should he be given the right to everlasting life? The majority of us would cry no, but the fact is we tend to judge others by, a, by the standard that we have mastered. So the things we don't do, we call others out on. And the things we do do, we justify behind just being human. So if everyone's understanding of good is relative, what standard does God judge by? It's definitely not ours. God gives us the measuring stick that all must adhere to. The law that says, whether rich or poor, small or great, this is the measuring stick by which you shall be judged. It's called the Ten Commandments. So now if everyone is judged according to, according to one law, it nullifies financial status, education, upbringing and life experiences. It nullifies your opinion or anyone else's for that matter. It's God's law and it's settled. So the Ten Commandments are the roadmap to the cross. It shows that we have all fallen short and cannot save ourselves. The Bible says to fault on one, we are guilty of them all. The wages of sin is death. So if we have told, ever told one lie, we are declared guilty before God and the judgment for sin is hell. Eternally separated from God, burning in a fire that cannot be quenched. But 2,000 years ago, God the Father sent his only son to earth to, be publicly, to publicly pay the price for our sin on the cross by shedding his innocent blood. To all that believe, he has given the right to everlasting life. To come to the cross, we must acknowledge that we are sinners and need a savior in order for the cross to have any value. We approach the cross as we are, filthy with sin before Almighty God, and we are washed in the blood of Christ, declared innocent in the courts of heaven, and given the gift of everlasting life. Not because we deserve it, but because Jesus Christ paid it all for us. To receive this gift, we must truly believe that he is the son of God, that he died for our personal sins and rose again. In this act of faith, you are justified in the sight of God and declared righteous. In Romans 10 verse 9, the Bible tells us that if you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. For, for with the heart one believes unto righteousness and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. When you come to the cross and truly repent before God, understanding that you are guilty of being a sinner before him, you are truly forgiven. God told me years ago, forgiveness is given when true repentance is offered. Let me repeat that. Forgiveness is given when true repentance is offered. The sign of a true heart of repentance is a changed life. You cannot leave as you came. A true encounter with God brings a change of heart. And from that point to the day you die and go home to be with him, you partner with God to change your way slowly but surely, sanctified to look more and more like the image of Christ. 
A sign of a false conversion is an unchanged heart, no repentance, no forgiveness, no salvation. A gospel that teaches otherwise is a fake gospel. If this message has touched your heart and you long for a relationship with God, I will pray a simple prayer that will place your hand in His hand. This is what I'm called to do. Then I will back away and you'll be alone with your Father. God told me a few years ago to tell His people he, that He loves them. So I'm telling you today, God loves you. Pray every day and devour His Word and walk out your salvation with Jesus Christ. This way you will avoid the wolves and the false doctrines and be steadfast in the faith until you find yourself face to face with the Father. Turn from sin and dedicate your life to the truth and a life on fire for Jesus Christ. I'm going to pray. And you can repeat it after me or pray it on your own. It's no magic words or a said thing. Just a simple declaration of belief before God. And you receiving the grace paid for in the blood of Christ for the forgiveness of your sins. <clears throat> Lord Jesus, I believe that you are the Son of God. You died for my sins and rose again. Please forgive me. I am a sinner and I acknowledge my need for a savior. Cleanse me in your blood. Make me a new creation. Come into my heart and be the Lord of my life. In Jesus' name, amen. If you prayed that prayer and you truly meant it from the heart, you are now a child of the Most High God, creator of the heavens and the earth. I would advise that you find a good Bible-based church to fellowship with other Christians. May God bless you and keep you and reveal himself to you. In Jesus' name, amen. This is Barry Hutton for His Infinite Mercy Ministries, preaching the truth of Jesus Christ and exposing the lies of Satan. Please press subscribe before leaving to follow the ministry and check out our Instagram and Facebook accounts. Please also consider supporting this ministry through PayPal. Our PayPal details will be listed on the details section of this video. Thank you.